first thing I wanted to do was to show how to upload more than one sequence uh, at a time, in this case using a TXT file. So I'll click on Upload Sequence. I'll go into my files here, um, find the file I want to open up, and I've now uploaded five sequences uh, for searching. Fairly easy to create these TXT files. I did mine uh, through using Word, which do you do need a header uh, for each sequence, which can be created by putting the greater than sign and then free text, a full return, and then you can either type in your um, sequence of interest or paste it in. And then, like I say, save that as a TXT file. Uh, then very easy to upload, and here we are ready to go. I'll be searching protein to find proteins, and I'm going to start the search. Comes back pretty quickly. And the five different sequences I uh, brought in for searching were the uh, wild type sequence, and then also uh, the mutant sequence that was found, and then some other insects uh, that have closely related sequences. So if we start looking through the answers here, here's a 100% uh, match uh, for the wild type sequence. If I want more information, I can click on the subject and highlight the fact that uh, with the NCBI sequences uh, present, uh, we can find them there and then also provide hyperlinks to go into the NCBI database to look at the information associated with that sequence. Uh, continuing on through this, I see a close related sequence, one difference uh, in the sequence there. And uh, by flying here, I can see that this is a uh, actually from the tobacco budworm. So if um, similar types of genetic engineering um, were used in with this plant as well, uh, one might want to take and, and watch out for the resistance also evolving uh, in this instance. Um, continuing on, I was looking at the wild type sequences. I could go to the mutant sequences. And here I could pull up <clears throat> the information uh, on the mutant sequence that has been isolated, just as I, as I had with uh, everything else. Get you in, uh, once again, an NCBI um, sequence here. Pull up uh, all that information. So I can scroll through them uh, like I was, or we now have these uh, organism filters over here. So if I see one that catches my eye, and here's Ostrinia Aust fernicalis, and I know that's an Asian corn borer. So uh, that might also um, be one that would have a similar uh, type of genetic injuring done to it. Uh, some uh, differences uh, in the sequence, but uh, a lot of similarity down at this end of the sequence. So that is another way sequences can be selected uh, from an answer set. If I am interested in uh, maybe sharing a certain answer set with colleagues, uh, I do have the ability to download that. In order to demonstrate this, I'm going to pull back my whole um, mutant answer set here. Uh, and I can do that by clicking on this icon up here. This will download all the information uh, present into an Excel spreadsheet. It will take a second or two to uh, pull it all together. Um, but Given that's in an Excel spreadsheet, it's a really nice way to demonstrate all the different characteristics of the answer set because uh, they will be sortable and searchable. So here's the cartoon for each of the query and subject sequences. If there is a mismatch, you'll see a red line in the approximate position where that mismatch is. If I come over here to the actual alignment text, you'll see when there is a mismatch, there'll be either a gap between the top and uh, bottom residue or there'll be a plus if it is a mismatch, but a mismatch of a similar uh, type of amino acid. Uh, as I said, uh, each of these will be uh, sortable and searchable. So if I click on this and I want to sort by uh, sequence length, uh, I can do so. And then as we scroll across, you'll see all the different topics uh, or pieces of information that will be captured if they are present. You see the NCBI identifiers. If there were patents, uh, it would also bring back patent numbers. And then the scoring functions, the expect value, blast score, matches, mismatches, alignment ID. Uh, once again, uh, this can be downloaded uh, up to uh, 100 answers, uh, no problem with this answer set uh, of meeting that. And it can be shared with other uh, colleagues. All right. The last portion of blast searching I will discuss uh, is if I would like to find the nucleotide sequences that codes for a given protein. I can do this in the following manner. I can put in uh, the sequence of interest there. I can say I'm searching a protein to find nucleotide sequences. And then I can go ahead and 
uh, launch that search. Uh, comes back pretty quickly. I'll view the results. And I'll see there are two instances where there was 100% uh, Alamin identity. I'll take the one that's fairly uh, a little bit smaller here to start. And if I wanted to see the key nucleotide sequence, uh, first of all, it's a 23 amino acid sequence I'm looking for. So it'll be a stretch of 69 uh, nucleotides I'd be looking to pull back. And it's telling me to start at residue 230, so from 230 to 299. So I can go in here and uh, basically see 230 to 299, copy and paste. And you know then I've got the sequence. I could also go look at the other sequence here if, and see if it is uh, um, maybe slightly different or what have you. But really easy, quick way uh, to pull that type of information back.